Helmets are a quite controversial topic in Tarkov. Many wonder what is a helmet actually good for? Because if you only consider the armor class, helmets are actually quite bad and quite expensive. But because of that we should not take the same approach with helmets than we do with armor. Because helmets can very often save your life, especially against people with very, very good gaming chairs. You know what I mean. <laughs> but what makes a helmet good? What features does a helmet need? To be considered good. That's what we are going to look at today and at the end I will show you a tier list and go through every single helmet and explain to you why it is at a certain tier to show you and give you an understanding on which helmets are recommended and which ones are not. And we start off with armor points and the material. Because if a bullet hits your helmet it doesn't matter if the bullet goes through, bounces off or is stopped. Your helmet will lose armor points. Yet it is important to know that these armor points are not the real armor points at all. <laughs> because yeah, that would be way too easy. <laughs> the thing is that the material has a hidden value, which we use to divide the original armor points. And that gives us the effective armor durability. If we for example look at the Ulak, it has 38 armor points, is made out of ultralight polyethylene, sorry for the pronunciation, so that results in an effective durability of 84, which is pretty good. Meaning it won't be completely destroyed after just one round. Now knowing this is not essential, but I still think it's important to at least hurt it once on the surface. The material also affects how well a helmet can be repaired. As you probably can imagine, glass is pretty hard to repair, while on the other hand for example steel, doesn't lose that much armor points with each repair. Now let's talk about armor areas. Every helmet has a certain area that it protects. You can see it in the properties of the helmet in game. But as before, it would be too easy if it was what it looked like. Because if you remember with the armor video, a hex grid for example, it looks like it protects only a small portion of your forex, but in reality it protects everything because the hitbox is not equal to the visual model. And the same goes for helmets. For example, an Olak says it protects your ears. But as you can see, even though it looks like it only protects portion of your ears, it protects the whole side of your head. And that is because the visual model is not equal to the actual hitbox model. And uh, this is very important to know and is an absolute game changer for a lot of armors and helmets. This might change in the future though, with the upcoming patches we could see an implementation of the modular armors and with that we might see a change, but until then every protective gear protects what it says in the description and not what it looks like it will protect. And we have the ricochet chance. If a bullet hits your helmet, you have a chance, especially depending on the angle, that the bullet will just bounce off and not deal too much damage. Your head will be ringing, but you will be still alive and the helmet won't lose that many armor points, meaning it could protect you from another one. And the crazy thing about it is that with Ricochet, it doesn't matter what armor stats the helmet has or what penetration the bullet has. So you can potentially let the best bullet in the game bounce off your helmet with the cheapest helmet available. Potentially. There are different values for record chances and those are high, medium, low and none. There are no percentage values because it all depends on the angle, the round being used and of course the helmet we're wearing. So we're not able to calculate exactly what your chances are, but it happens more frequently than you might think. Then there are modifiers, which are also quite important because depending on the helmet that you're using, it affects your turning speed, your movement speed and even your ergonomics. And you should not underestimate that one. Because for example, let's say you have a weapon which has 50 ergonomics and then you use bad gear which reduces your ergonomics by let's say 20%. And suddenly you have a weapon with 40 ergonomics and you will definitely notice that 10 ergonomics difference. So you want to keep an eye out for that, especially since it stacks. So armor, helmet and everything you put on a helmet, it all stacks. Which brings us neatly to the next topic, which is modability. With many helmets, you can put on a lot of different things. Night sights, visors, ear protections, jaw protectors and so on. Now to see which mods you can use, the easiest way is probably to check the wiki. 
but you can also use the linked search in game but depending on what you're looking for it might not be able to be traded on the flea market and if it's not available with traders it will not appear on your screen even though you will technically be able to use it so the safest way is really to use the wiki if you really want to know what you can put on your helmet now those are the basics and kind of a fundamental knowledge that will allow you to understand why a certain helmets are at certain tiers and why decisions were made the way they were made for the following tier list. So it's tier list time. But before we start with the tier list, let me just say you will never 100% agree with any tier list. It's not about getting it 100% right. It's about providing some insight and comparing different helmets to each other and kind of ranking them and presenting the reasons why and to give a general overview. That's that, let's start with the tier list. Now we start off with the TSH, a tank helmet, and it's one of the worst in the game. First off, it blocks headset, the other, it reduces what you can hear pretty heavily, because well, you have some thick plates on your ears. The ricketed chance is high, yes, but the armor level is just level 1, so it will not be able to protect you from much. It's not moddable, but the modifiers are good because it doesn't have any debuffs. But still, the problem is a ricketed chance would be a good thing, but it blocks your earpieces, so you might run into an opponent without even knowing, and then an armor 1 helmet will not protect you. So the helmet isn't really good, not even for style points. And we have the first one of the fast MT helmets. And that, on the other hand, is pretty good. It doesn't block any earpieces, has a high ricketed chance, the armor class is again not very good, it's moddable, mainly for night vision scopes, because the face shield is not going to protect you from anything. And the modifiers are great too, because it barely has any. Now, why is this helmet good? Basically, because it doesn't cost anything. It was available for 10,000 rubles for a while, but now more and more people start using it, meaning it could go up in price, so you might have to reconsider. But it's a great helmet to bring for budget runs and whatnot, where you would not use a helmet, so you can instead just spend 10,000 rubles and use this one because the high ricochet chance really saved my life more than one occasion. And we continue with the armor class 2 helmets, and a lot of them just go right to D tier. For the same reasons as with the tank helmet before, they all block earpieces and reduce your hearing, on top of having really bad armor classes and ricketed chances, so, so they will hinder you more and it will protect you. Don't use them, ever. Then let's continue with tier 3 helmets. Now we start off with the famous penis helmet. Now it doesn't block a headset, which is good. It has a high ricketed chance, which is good. Armor class 3 is okay for a helmet. It's not moddable, but the modifiers are terrible. Minus 13% ergonomics. That means that it destroys the amount of ergonomics that you get, from example, from a skeleton grip for 80 90,000 rubles. So, considering that, I would only use it, for example, for money runs where you bring guns that don't really rely on 10 ergonomics more or less. But don't bring it for serious runs because it's gonna destroy your ergonomics. And then we have the Kiever and the SSSH. And again, they block earpieces and reduce sound. And usually for helmets that block earpieces, you want them to be at least level 5 in armor class. Level 3 is just not good in that case. Early wipe, it's okay, but just after 2 weeks, it's completely useless basically. Then the Ronin mask, we don't talk about that one, it's just way too expensive, never use it, just sell it to Ragman. Then the LSHZ. The problem with this one is, it's only level 3 and has a medium ricochet chance, which means it's not gonna protect you from much. And there are better alternatives. Like for example the 6P47. This helmet is basically the penis helmet but better, because it has basically the same properties but you can mod it a little bit. It protects your ears and the modifiers are pretty good. Furthermore, you can get it pretty cheap, scavs carry it around a lot and there is a good trade for it. So I would argue it's the best tier 3 helmet out there. And we have the Untar which is basically the same as the 6B. The only difference, it's blue and well, you're easy to spot so I would not use it, just instead use the 6B. And then the NFM, 
It's insanely expensive, 50,000 rubles easily and it doesn't provide any more value than the 6B. It also doesn't protect ears, so there's no reason to use it over a 6B or an SSH in case of a budget run. And that's all for Armor Class 3. Let's now go over to the most common one, Armor Class 4. Now we start off with the most famous ones, the Team Wendy and the Airframe. They don't block any earpieces, have a high wreckage chance, level 4 armor class which is good, are highly moddable and the modifiers are also pretty great depending on what you put on in terms of modifications. So why do I only place them in B tier? Simple. They are insanely expensive. 250, 300 thousand rubles just for a helmet and it isn't gonna save your life that often because the face shield is armor class 3, the ear coverage is armor class 3, so even a GPS round has a good chance of killing you and then you just lost 200, 300 thousand rubles. So if money isn't a concern for you, then go for it, otherwise it's just not worth the amount of money. The armor class 4, fast and T helmet is pretty much the same story, then the TC800 is more or less the budget version for the exact same thing. You get it for 70,000 or even less and it also has a face shield that isn't too expensive as well. So if you need protection from budget SMGs or shotguns for example on factory and this is a very good budget alternative to the Team Wendy. Then we have the Ulak and it's just one of the best helmets in the game hands down. Simple. It doesn't block earpieces, has a high rickety chance, very good armor class with level 4 it also protects your ears, so the sides are covered already with armor class 4. The modifiers are pretty good, so it's an all around good helmet for only 70 to 80 thousand rubles. There is a reason that pretty much everybody that is running around with meta gear is using an Ulak if they're not rocking an Alton. Then we have the Bastion helmet. A lot of people think a helmet is good, I think it's utter garbage. Now, here's why. The only reason why you should use the Bastion is basically it has a slap, which is level 6. But that thing costs easily 200,000 or more. And then you just hope that your opponent shoots exactly to your forehead and not 5 centimeters lower into your face. And if that happens, which is often the case, you just lost a quarter million rubles which in my opinion is absolutely not worth the money. And we have the Highcom Striker. It's a decent tier 4 helmet, doesn't protect your ears, it's not modable, so it's a good budget helmet for around 40,000 rubles. And we have the BNTI. And this helmet is actually not that expensive and the difference, the face shield is also level 4. So it's gonna protect you from quite a bit of SMGs and shotguns, making it the perfect helmet for factory for not that much rules. But of course it blocks your hearing so it's best played with a teammate that can kinda spot for you. And we have the ZSH, it's pretty much the same, except for the face shield is tier 3, making it pretty bad in comparison only maybe for early wipe. Then we have the TC helmets, and those are also very good all-rounder helmets, slightly moddable, very good stats, not that expensive, so I would say a very price efficient helmet if you want to go for a class 4 helmet without spending tons of money. Now we have the Cayman, which is just overpriced and horrible, just sell it to Rackman and buy something else. Then we have the Killer helmet, which, well, you have to find it in Raid, it's not that good. Yeah, the face shield is class 6, but again, you just have to hope and pray that somebody shoots your face shield and not the rest of your big head, so that's not worth. Now that's it for tier 4, I hope I didn't forget any, otherwise let me know. And then let's move on to tier 5 helmets, and here it gets very interesting. For example, we have the Alton, and that's an easy pick for S tier. The Alton is just a beast. Yes, you can't use a headset with it. But that's the only downside. Armor class 5 is going to protect you from a lot of rounds in the game and you have it all around your head. Even an M4 with M855A1 is not going to kill you with one round. Also the ricochet chance is high with a helmet all around your head again, meaning you will tank even more rounds. 
So uh, that thing is amazing when you play on maps where you just have to expect somebody shooting at your face. Like for example factory, labs or customs when you go dorms and so on, you get the point. Well, factory has the issue of lag meta so it might not be the brightest idea to go factory with it. But otherwise the amount of protection that you get from this helmet is just insane. With the right armor combination you will feel like an absolute tank. The race helmet is basically his bigger brother. It's slightly better in terms of armor points and slightly better in terms of modifiers, but basically the same helmet. So whenever you get one of those, just use them. They are amazing. And we have the Tagila mask. And first off, yeah, it's a mask. It will not protect the back of your head, but from the front, it will offer amazing amounts of protection. Class 5 armor, high ricochet chance, and hella stylish. But the main problem, it doesn't protect you all around, it blocks your headset and you have to find it in raid because you cannot buy it. So I would say if you have access to it, it's a very very good helmet mask, but best played in a team composition that somebody else can tell you where others are approaching from so that you don't have your back turned in the wrong moment. Lastly, we have the only class 6 helmet, the Vulcan. And in my opinion, horrible. Yeah, it's class 6, but the face shield is only class 4. And the trade is insane. You have to trade a graphics card for it. A lot of money to just hope that nobody will shoot at your face shield. And if they do, you just lost 700,000 rubles. That's a lot. So I would not use it, instead go for an Altum, way better. And that's everything, that are all the helmets. Now again, you will not agree 100% with every decision I made. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. But again, the idea was to give a general overview and explain each decision. But in conclusion, I would say for most people, just take a look at the A tier. Those are the helmets that you mainly want to focus on, except for the tequila mask, of course. And as you get more experience in the game, you can take a look at other tiers because they have some niche uses. Then thanks for watching, I hope it was helpful, if so don't forget to thumbs up as it really helps the channel, subscribe for more and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.